We are uh, reconvening uh, the meeting, actually from page three, we're on public comments on the open session agenda. The open hearing closed at 10 p.m. Mr. Thomas William McKenzie. My name is Tom McKenzie. I'm the development manager for Arts for All. Hi. And uh, thank you again for this opportunity to speak in support of the approval of Centinella Valley Union High School District's Arts Education Plan, item W. Uh, we know that arts education enriches student learning and increases the likelihood of success in college and in the workforce. Good evening again. I was looking through the paperwork up front and I've got some concerns again. We were all brought here by concerns of what transpired with Mr. Fernandez and I really want to implore your attention to specifically Ron Hacker's statement contract. In lieu of reimbursement for vehicle and phone, he shall receive management incentive salary adjustment this statement allows for the retirement to go higher with CalPERS. I don't know if you're aware of that, but if it's not a reimbursement and it goes onto his payroll, that changes his retirement money. I don't know if you realize that. It's not in all the in all three contracts, just in that one. I thought we kind of learned about what you put in contracts and what you approve and what lawyers put together and what you sign on. And I'm curious why also the back of that particular agreement needs a signature from Jose Fernandez and not from the present board. So I might want to look at that. Can we can we see that? Do you have that one? Because I think there might have been a mistake, but can do you have that so I can see that please? The yeah. Ron Yes, please. Yeah, and actually okay, I want to make a statement in regards to that, Miss, and, and we'll keep your time if you allow me to. Um, yeah, like freeze her time so she can still finish. So if we can freeze it or add more time if necessary. Excuse me. Um, I want to make a statement regarding the proposed contracts that are on the agenda. Incorrect versions of the contracts were copied and made available tonight. Well, that's what I'm going on. So you guys, I think, Perfect. have time to prep for that. But most of those incorrect copies were retrieved, but... Uh, there may have been a copy that is not correct, so the correct versions of the contracts are available in the lobby now. Um, if you want to see the contracts, please make sure you have um, the correct version, which is in the lobby at this Put the time. the right ones out in the lobby. Well, we can, we can, should we have somebody pass them out? In Mr. Cox's employment agreement, you're allowing for him to get a life insurance policy, like Mr. Fernandez had, he's an interim if I'm not mistaken. So he's also being afforded the opportunities that were put through for Fernandez. Are we just going down the same path again? Yes. <laughs> All right, the base salary. Um, looks like 152625 allowing for the $9,600 pension for vehicle and phone not being a reimbursement, but going on to his salary. That already ups it to 162,000. So the 152, go ahead and dump that money already in there because you put it in there specifically, not as a reimbursement, which I have a problem with because as, as a property owner and the parent, that means that's part of a life pension and that's helping spike it, which is what happened with Fernandez and the extra 153,000 or 253 he put into his pension spike. I don't want to see that happen again. If you're going to approve these, I'd like to file the complaint and I want to know who the complaint is addressed to, specifically arguing that what you're going to approve is not what I would like you to approve. I don't want this to fall on deaf ears. I don't want to be a mouthpiece. I want you to understand what I think we all are saying. We don't want excessive things shoved around, moved around, renamed, relabeled, and just giving the same thing to someone. And in a few years, oops, we didn't realize what we signed. You guys have taken governance classes in this. Masters, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe that was sleeping. I was given this uh, by someone who obviously would like to stay in the shadows. Um, it's a particular statement from someone in the district um, that doesn't want their job compromised. 
So I'm going to read this on their behalf. Bob Cox should not be made interim superintendent. He participated knowingly and willingly in assisting Jose Fernandez in looting this district. Over the last four years, he laid off teachers, filed lawsuits against teachers, and otherwise harassed and bullied teachers who spoke out simply to support Jose Fernandez. He destroyed morale at the school site. And possibly Bob Cox is not even qualified to be the assistant superintendent of human resources. He seldom makes any decisions without running it by legal counsel. He is responsible for at least half of the outrageous amounts of money spent on attorneys in this district. And I just want to implore one more personal item. Um, want to save Mr. Clem some time. The $755,684 that you're going to approve tonight on change orders. Can there some some speck of accountability be brought out to the taxpayers, to the people that are sitting here wanting to be heard and talked to and listened to? Why change orders are something that truly are just kind of carte blanche approved? I thought there were surveys. I thought there were schematics. I thought there there was presentations, architectural renderings. And if those things aren't up to standard, there's a problem. Why are change orders to the tune of seven hundred fifty-five thousand dollars this month being approved? when there were over 500,000, I believe, at the last meeting. I can't even imagine what's going to be put through next month. I'm not proud of this. I'm not happy my kids are subject to this type of district oversight. I see your time. Thank you. Uh, have Mr. Bob Cox make a comment, please, if you would, sir. First of all, there is no excuse for the fact that we had the wrong contracts out there. Thank you. There is no excuse. That should not have happened. That fell on my watch, therefore it's my fault, and I apologize. Those were old drafts that were created at a time when Mr. Fernandez was still here. Okay. We have since... So caught, in that vein, that I'm relying on this, can we, can so we let's let not vote on this. Let's not make a commitment tonight until the proper contract is disseminated to everybody. If, if I Transparency. May if I may continue. You may continue. The proper contracts have been on the table for three hours. Public anything, 
And maybe they're not attempting to do it, but this is, again, a trust and credibility issue with you guys. It makes it look like you're trying to hide things again by making us wait here until late at night. Um, Amanda's already brought up, I think my time's coming up, but um, the items for the change request, uh, again, last month you guys approved like 374,000, this time it's 755. Why? What are the changes? Are they again mistakes that were being made? Because that's what he explained last time. And is he going to get up here and talk? Because he probably should have done it when all the public was here. Again, you guys waiting until everybody's gone. And then the last thing is you guys have 20 pages with over 100 items to go through after a minimum two-hour presentation. Do you guys have all the information for this? Have you guys gone through all of this stuff? And no, because there's minimal information that I can't even come up here and ask you guys questions on. So this, this isn't good. I mean, so how are you guys going to go through? Are you going to be here till 1 o'clock in the morning to prove these? Or not? Or are you just going to rubber stamp a yes on all of them? Well, we hope to go through it and answer as many questions as we possibly can. And I, and I realize that I'm going to let you. But the thing is, is that you, you've got all these, like I said, 20 pages, over 100 items. Are you guys getting information outside of these public meetings? Are you guys discussing it outside of these public meetings? And is that information anywhere so that the public can go through and look at this? Because a lot of this stuff I'm not going to know unless you guys are explaining it to or you give me the information. And it looks really bad that you have all this information on here. It's after 10, and you're going to be going through it. We, it, we get this on Friday. So then there's a that problem. To so then there's a problem. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? If you're getting all of this at the last minute, how are you guys informed then? How are you making a good decision on what's in there if you just got it on Friday? We that, it on the weekend. <laughs> we have Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And Monday. Do you, do you see what I'm saying? This is, that's a problem. This is too many things, especially after a long presentation, and then half the public, or most of the public, I should say, is gone. So nobody's here to be involved, which is what we need to be doing. Um, again, like I said, that's a trust and credibility issue. It doesn't look good for you guys, anybody. So hopefully you are actually listening to us, and you can address some of these questions that we actually have. Yes, congratulations. I think many believe that this district is one of the most corrupt in the United States of America. Let's go down a brief rundown of some of the discoveries in the last couple months. We have a superintendent who made approximately $750,000 a year. He had multiple life insurance policies that helped him get to that amount. Uh, we have a, a school board that is misappropriating approximately $910,000 in district money. Uh, he has a zero down, 2% interest loan. Uh, we have apparently, from what the teachers have said and an email I have received from somebody from the district, uh, basically the henchman has taken over uh, in the position of superintendent, so that's great. Uh, let's see, what else do we have? We have uh, students uh, declaring that the Williams Act has been uh, violated. Shortages of paper according to students and teachers. Short shortages of toilet paper for a couple of weeks. We have a construction company that helped fund three school board members, as far as I'm aware of, for $55,000 to get in their positions. In return, $196 million uh, of bond money has gone to Teleco. That's one hell of a profit margin, people. It's called pay to play. We have a parcel tax that Teleco helped get through this uh, district. They helped pay $15,000 according to a, a, a newspaper article I read. Uh, that has actually, it's called Measure CL. It has brought in approximately 10, $11 million a year to the high school and elementary schools. Uh, what else do we have? Uh, Pars measure CL is what it's called. Apparently it is illegal uh, if you look at the Forbicus against Alameda Measure H. We have a bond oversight board that, as far as I can tell, is completely un unaccountable. We have a union president that does nothing for their union at all. He does not protect or stand up for anybody there. What else do we got? I have no idea what uh, page 18, McCarthy Building Companies request to approve 
Addendum number one, to lease back agreement between CBUHSD and McCarthy Building Companies, uh, reducing re retention from 10% to 5%. I thought the, uh, the public actually paid for that. And one very beautiful item, most of the people weren't here at five o'clock as they did not know that the meeting started at five, but there was something about the Brown Act, uh, in, in immediate need action cause, Number 5494, pardon me, 54954.2b. Apparently it's a very small item. It's a short-term debt instrument item where the school board is gonna start having funds and they need to, for some reason, collect $15 million by selling notes. I have no idea what that is or what that is in regards to, but unfortunately all the people are, have gone home and you guys mentioned that at five. We thought the meeting was at 545, or most of us did. So those are just a few items. I challenge any other school district in the nation to come up with more issues. And due to time, I do have more issues here. I have been speaking to the district attorney, Seth, and I expect that he will be holding people accountable, or we will hold him accountable. Thank you.